uh, like there is for uh, in tensorflow there is uh, keras.de serializing mm -hmm. to use the config uh, the dictionary to make layers so i haven't found anything like that for pytorch yet yeah in, yeah in tensorflow it is uh, we can pass that one thing. Uh, John, uh, last time you said that uh, we will be fixing this using some entry point for layers. Uh, oh yeah. Um, yeah let's so, see. Uh, uh, the reason, yeah, the reason why I said that. Okay, so let me remember. Yeah, I believe what I was thinking there is that um, the um, uh, this is going to be tricky actually. Um, Let's see. We might need some sort of other facility to do this. Um, the right, the entry point system allows us to do. Um, well, let's see. The way that we have all the the config stuff structured allows us to do like, what is this thing, and then what are all the arguments to this thing, right? And that uses our command line parsing, and like everything goes like the unified config stuff. Um, but I'm th I think now we, we might not need that actually because some the config stuff is changing somewhat, um, especially like with the, the shared config. Um, some things have changed. Um, like I'm going through that and I'm trying to trying to make it trying to even more standardized config stuff. Um, and so I think essentially, I mean, the only reason why uh, why I was talking about entry points for that was because you define like what is the type that you want to load and then what is the and then what are the arguments to that type and the way that we register all the types is via entry points um we're probably just going to need to do it the thing is that so to find out what well i guess we have a predefined list of types that are that are layer types right um, cause I believe there was like layer and then dense and I can't remember what they all were. Yeah. Um, it's been a while since I looked at them. Um, yeah. but so yeah, you've got that list of types and then if it's, if it's definitely a predefined list, then we can just write entry points. If it's something that like, you know, TensorFlow might change on a dime, then, you know, we, we need to find some way of sort of dynam dynamically generating it. Um, but if yeah, it's probably. I think for now we can probably just start with like you know a few of them and and make entry points out of them. Um, and and I let's see, did we have an issue for that? I don't think we do. Um, let me make a new issue for that too. So the, sorry, one second. Let me just write this down real quick, and then then remind me because I might forget in two seconds. So okay, operations preprocessing uh, provide uh, common preprocessing operations. Okay. Uh, I think that's what's happening. Okay. Um, uh, so, and we should do this within the main library. So, within, within DFML slash operations preprocessing. Then the main so like the, it, it would use sklearn dot preprocessing. So well, how will think, that work in the main library? What Yash is saying though was was we should have some built in, right? Right, Yash. Uh, uh, I I I think we can. Uh, I mean, this or, is like we can do we can write them ourselves too but it would be more efficient to use sklr okay okay as a plug. all right so let's just do um yeah so operations prepress so let's create a new plugin uh preprocessing um uh which um wraps Slash provides common pre-processing uh, tasks. Um, we'll need examples on usage as well. Um, so perhaps a pre-processing tutorial. Uh, actually, we can probably just use them in. So, so each. 
operation should contain example usage um, within doc string. Okay. Um, so each operation should contain example usage within doc string. Um, and so, for example, one hot encoding a feature. Uh, okay. And then, so let's see. Um, and then, so yeah, one hot encoding of feature. Uh, is there? Let's. What? What other ones would you would come to mind? Anything come to mind right away here? Uh, rescaling features that would increase the even increase the accuracy for the flower classification models. So I talked to you about this. This is this is like the normalization or. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, don't we have the multiply operation, or should we? explicitly name it I thought I thought we did have that okay so the thing is that uh, we are taking three features with uh, with three different array features and we are not like uh, making them into a single feature to rescale them according to their different values okay so okay so basically you wanted to uh, like a you know the max possible value on each different array and then scale by that oh uh, yes okay I guess my question then is uh, what's okay so what's currently stopping you from doing that the thing is that it uh, the operation workflow would get very very intricate and okay. very very long okay and to simplify it a lot of what what yeah, would uh, not, it what would it simple. what would it look like to simplify it then? Uh, to simplify it, that it, I think that what I first uh, proposed, like you know, making them into a single array feature array. Oh, Maybe just throw would... them all into one array. Yeah. Hmm. Well, but so I mean that, but so we we suggested like a rescaling feature operation, right? And so what, what would that operation be is, I guess, my question here. Like, what would that operation do? Yeah. It would just rescale the values between the given range, like 0 to 1, so that uh, which will uh, increase the accuracy because there will be a lot of features that uh, uh, fix a, a feature uh, values in the vectors. Yeah, we'll have values ranging from like minus thousand, two thousand, and zero yeah. point zero zero one. So I guess that's that's sort of what I was trying to get at is how do you do you do you care if there's a min max right? Like do you care what the maximum really is, even if none of the values in there hit the maximum, or are you just using whatever maximum you see in there as the possible maximum? Yeah, the second thing. Okay. Okay. Now I see. Okay. Then I see. Now I see why you want a different operation. All right. Okay. Cool. Um, let's see. Um, so rescaling features. So uh, find max and scale whole array by max value. Okay. Two, zero. All right. Cool. Um, and then anything else that we can think of off the bat here? Rescaling is basically like we can redefine it. We can use different words for it, like normalization and standardization. Yeah. That's okay. what we actually call them. Okay, yeah. So let's call it normalization. Uh, and there are like multiple functions that basically just standardize the data and uh, the scale the variance and stuff. So, so check out. just have to check out that like what kind of method we need to use. There's a whole library like cited. Yeah. People are saying. I know Sakshan was talking about that. You were talking about maybe wrapping some of those in relation to the image operations, right? Yeah, we were talking about that last week. Okay. Yeah. So I guess this is sort of an extension of that. Uh, for more videos. 
Okay, great. Yeah, I think that would be very helpful. Um, Because I think, you know, yeah, pre-processing is definitely, you know, that's sort of a large part of what we're trying to provide here is the data flows to do pre-processing. So, okay, so let's just go over those things that we just, just generated. I think we missed one. So defining layers for our neural network, the libraries that support neural networks. Um, and then, um, so let's see, let me just, so, uh, support layer neural network layer definition. Um, let's see. Uh, and then there was one more thing we talked about. Actually, maybe it was just, do you guys remember, or maybe it was just that we need to go entry point, make these entry points? Let's see. All right. We have quite a few CLI examples, but we don't have actual Python API examples. Oh, yeah. Thank you. We should, like, we can have a different folder in the repo itself, like having a, quite a few Jupyter notebooks explaining how to use DFML step by step with some data. Um, yeah, so, okay, so yeah, we have, like you're saying, we have. Um, um, I haven't personally used DFFML Python yet. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. I mean, we. So you're saying right? We have where? Oh, there's the command line. So, yeah, we have command line reference, um, but we don't have many Python examples, right? So maybe something reference plugins command line Python or something, right? Or plugins Python command line. Right, and do the same things that we're doing here for Python. Is that the idea? Yeah, so like uh, I, this would be a question for you. Like basically what is our target? Like, are we, we, we are focusing a lot on CLI, but I don't think everyone uses CLI. Not yeah, much. that's true. Like, um, so. Yeah, I mean, I think that we should definitely have, I mean, the target is essentially, you know, you know, um, one one thing to you know one common interface no matter whether you're command line http api or python api right the whole the flow is is very the same right um so i think that yeah we should definitely be providing python examples i mean we have some tutorials but they're mostly like they're not really there's we're still we're still not to the point where we have a lot of usage tutorials we need some more 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 and more and more usage examples right um let's see um but yeah i think we need more actually one of them that we had talked about was and i don't know if we have a issue for this we should sort of make um, let's see we had talked about the one where we would how's it going sutanshu um we had talked about the let's see what is it um uh, what is it called? Uh, basically, the comparison of all models. So, so, sum of all models. So basically, like go through and find the best model, right? Um, so I guess we don't have an issue for that because um, that's sort of like a key feature that we obviously have nowhere right now. So um, that's something that we yeah, need we to talked do. about it earlier and I, I tried that like I, I tried thinking about it like how would that go but uh, uh, like I, I I couldn't find a simpler way to do that yeah okay like for I was trying to implement it for scikit but then it didn't make sense because we have auto scale and drop yeah DFS. yeah exactly well the models like if you're using a neural network like we are using tensorflow as well as uh, scikit and we, we majorly have these libraries and so if i run through all the models then how would i just 
decide what the config for these models are. Yeah, exactly. Um, so then this is why we need the tutorial for it. So basically, um, and find best one. Um, so essentially what, what we need to do, and I, we talked about this a little bit um, with the Wopal, Wopal Rabbit model and how uh, we, we want the features to be defaulting to converting from standard format to their format. Um, so, and the reason behind that was being like, if you have, for example, like, and this is another thing that we knew, need to do is we need to probably tag, we need models to probably provide some sort of, um, some sort of information about whether they're classification or regression or like a clustering model um, so that, um, so that we know what what to expect, right? Uh, if we give them input features, um, and it's because the idea would be, you know, for every model, um, at least like for regression models, for example, um, if you only provided the features and predict, then you could, you know, there would that would be enough. It would have sensible enough defaults to give you some kind of prediction, right? Um, and then from there, you would sort of say, all right, okay, which one of these models looks like it has, um, you know, it has some promise accuracy wise, and then you would start to go and tweak the config parameters, right? Um, and the other thing is that, that what, what we would like to do eventually is obviously something like auto SK learn where you could go through and it would run them all with default parameters and start tweaking the hyperparameters, right? Um, and then it would just spit out the best model with the best hyperparameters, right? So that's sort of like a, an, an end goal in this area, right? Um, but yeah, for now, we definitely just need a tutorial to show how you loop through all the models. And then definitely, this is another thing that I think we, we forgot about was some sort of identification of the models for you know is it going is is it will it be able to be used for whatever task you're trying to do right which is you know maybe reg regression or um like un unsupervised learning with clustering or, or regression or classification right um so and does anybody else have any thoughts on that uh, for uh scikit i think i have added this uh, that uh, it first rec uh, recognizes that whether it is classifier or regressor or clusterer, then yeah. it proceeds. Yep. Um, so let's see. Um, yeah, I know. So I know that you have that functionality in there to say what kind is it, right? And I think what we need to do is we need to expose that. Um, so how to loop through all models and find this one. Um, so need to expose what kind of model is this? Um, regression, classification, um, um, Screen. and then I don't know do we want to do let's see should we throw that should should the I mean the NLP models can be pretty different so should we label them as specifically NLP models here or what do you uh, think? I think I think we should add a property to uh, all the models yeah and there we can specify what they are okay so we can just access uh, while using Okay, great. So yeah, let's let's make a so let's make an issue that we need to add a um, a uh, let's it'll probably be a method or something um, or well yeah maybe just a property yeah um, let's see uh, feature request okay so model add uh, what do you guys I I hesitate to call this type uh, because it's a bit of an overloaded term but but uh, what do you think is a good name for this? Anybody have a suggestion? Yash, do you have a suggestion on this? Thinking about. Yeah. Does this seem like Yash? Does this seem like the type of thing that you're talking about when you're talking about Python examples? Like. Uh, 
I was just talking about uh, how how can we use all of the stuff that the FFML yeah, includes, just in like the image right operations now. recently and pre-processing stuff. So, if we have a data set, how would you use the FFML on it? Yeah, okay, like a great. practical, practical general example. Like, and this is also sensible to add something that helps us loop through all the models. Yeah, and find the best one. But okay, so, so just in general, yeah. Again, I think, I think that we need to discuss this a lot because after yeah. implementation, then deciding to remove that particular feature is very difficult. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, so let's just make this sort of. Um, Let's see. Let me just put the task or ML task, something like that. ML what? Uh, task. ML task. Or just task. Task. Yeah, okay. or just task. Oh yeah, the task is to do regression or something. All right, I like that. Um, so let's see. Um, and let's maybe put a um, this community input and deleted label on it, and we can all sort of just discuss it um we can we can do a little more thinking on this and whether it would be helpful or not um so what the model is used for we can call it category or category something like that. okay let's see let me make suggestions Ask. Okay. Um, oops. Possible values. Wow, I can't spell today. Um, damn it, I can never spell. Possible values. Include mission uh, certification NLP uh, clustering. Okay. Right. Um, okay. So I, yeah. Now I'm now I'm understanding your your uh, what you're saying better. Yes. Um, so basically, and I think that's that's actually sort of a good point to take keep in mind as we're writing tutorials um, and uh, things like yeah the MNIST handwritten digits and stuff um, and the one that that you're currently working on Himachu with NLP operations. We have these bunch of command line things, right? Um, but what we could be doing, and actually this is this is a great point because what we do in, for example, like the quick start and in all of our model documentation is we show how to do it with the command line and then we show how to do it with the Python API. And in the rest of the tutorials, we're just not showing how to do it with the Python API. Um, so we need to show how to do it with the Python okay. API too. So let's sort of just all make a note of that as we go forward that we need to... Um, so, uh, whenever we write tutorials, we need to not only provide the CLI, uh, but also the Python equivalent. Um, Um, and let's see, I had a thought about this. Oh, I was thinking that, I was thinking that it would be interesting to write a, uh, config loader that took command line invocations and turned them into, um, basically like a config loader for the command line. So... Um, it would look at the command and they would probably be very similar to the existing command line stuff we have. It would just parse it in, right? But that could basically, like you could write a config loader for the command line and you could write a config loader for Python and it would essentially like, you could take command line stuff and feed it through the 
config conversion command that we have and it would spit out the python api like the python equivalent of your command line invocation um, which might make writing some of these just like a tad faster but it would also um, we also might be able to start auto generating similar um, invocations of things um, i don't know that's sort yeah. of just it was uh yeah yeah that sounds cool actually Yep. Yeah, that's a great idea. Okay. That's, yeah. yeah, we should try to do that then because I think that will, as with other things, like the more stuff we write, the more stuff we have to change when there's any sort of, you know, anything changes, right? So if we have something that, that takes it from one format to the other format, because it's doing the same thing, right? So if we can take it from one format to the other format, um, that might be useful for, it might speed our speed our writing of these things. Um Let's see. So, um, and I'll just mark this as like a possible thing. So, um, oops. So, fig letter CLI fig letter to uh, load and dump uh, CLI. Um, so, and this basically, let's just describe this a little bit. So, idea here is to um, have a config loader that parses the CLI commands and produces um, commands and using the standard. Existing config infrastructure. Um, we'd then write a Python config loader, which could or would take the um, output of the load B um, from the CLI config loader. And its uh, dump b would be Python code, uh, which instantiates objects according uh, in the same way. Um, this might help us uh, keep CLI and uh, Python examples in sync. Okay, and this is sort of a longer term thing. Um, if we do this soon, great. If not, we can always just write the docs. Um, you know, do, do it by hand. Um, all right, that's a great point. Thank you for bringing that up, Yash. Um, okay. All right. Um, okay, so let's see. Um, anything, anything else that you've thought of, Yash, recently? Because these are very, it's very useful to have, you know, perspective like this. Yeah. I, I, I'll, cool. I'll Thank let you know if I have something else. Thank you. I, yeah. I have, I, I was considering using DFFML for a project recently, like a, a couple of weeks ago. Cool, and cool. But that was the problem. Like I, I, I tried, I tried using the scikit models, models ones, and it worked. Mm -hmm. But then ultimately, I had to import scikit for pre-processing, and uh, then I realized that. Yeah, might as particularly well do it if, if we, yeah, if we do have uh, pre-processing in DFFML, but still we don't have any examples mm -hmm. that can help me with it. Yeah, exactly. So, so provide Python examples because then if you need to do something else with if you do it in python and then you need to do something else uh then you've just you you're already in your python file and you can start importing um importing scikit stuff and then just leave the existing dffml code instead of just switching yeah. it all right okay that's yeah that's a great point i think we get we're we definitely uh you know ex ex especially the yeah, we get the 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 head can get in the weeds a lot. Um, so it's good to hear. It's good to hear um, 
perspective. All right. Um, so let's jump into the rest here. So actually, and then we need to cover. So, um, Agen, what do you want to cover? I mean, we're, no, we're at the top of the hour and we haven't really started much yet, but so. Uh, so uh, I want to talk about the immediate response. I can't, you're, you're really far away from your mic, I think. Oh, is it better now? Not really. Yeah. Oh, still? That's yeah, better, okay. yeah. Yeah, uh, so I want to talk about the immediate response thing. Response. Okay. You have made an issue, so I heard some doubts on it. And I updated the test for immediate response. So okay. Just be the radio. All right. Okay, so I'm going to review that offline. Um, so let's see. Yeah. All right, okay. Um, and then let's see, Sutanshu. Did we? Uh, yes. So uh, I think I, I merged like, phase uh, one, right? Yeah, the previous one. Sweet. Yeah. So uh, right now, like I have added the uh, example and the tests. Nice. But uh, like there was this issue that I was facing was that it was giving uh, attribute error underscore underscore a e a exit. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, and so you were correct in what you were thinking there. Um, sorry, I hadn't gotten a so chance to get back to you. We need to have like a context manager for it. We yeah, so I think so, but I'm also thinking. Let's see. I'm also thinking. Let's see. This derives from the context. This derives from the base object, so why don't they already, they should already have those. Oh, it's because this guy does not have a base class. I think that's what's going on. I think uh, that's why you're seeing that error, because the base class should be accuracy score. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so there we go. Um, all right, that was an easy fix. Yay. Um, so let's just do, uh, and, uh, well, you probably want to add that to this PR here so we can just, you know, throw it in, in there. Um, actually, let me just, okay, I'll put it right here and then I'll link to it in that PR. Okay, so let's see. Should fix the A enter A exit issue. All right. Anything? Let's see. Let me just put this. Oh, uh, uh, no, that's it. Uh, Accuracy scoring merged. Um, phase two PR up. Ready for review. Okay. All right. Um, sweet. Um, let's see. So, and then, yeah, okay. And this is, this looks great. This is exactly what I want. Um, let's see. Oh, and Yash, that's another thing that um, is uh, something new that's happening. Did you did have you heard you heard this discussion, Yash? Right? Or did you hear this discussion that we had, Yash, about yeah. the accuracy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I okay, cool. We discussed this discussed this last year too. 
Oh, we did. Oh, we must have forgotten about it. <laughs> now it's finally happening. Um, let's see. Okay, great. Um, let's see. Um, so yeah, let's get that updated in that PR, just that one comment, um, so that that the A inner works, and then we'll we'll merge that. Um, sweet. Yes, nice. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Looking good. This is gonna be this is gonna be um, sweet to have all this. Um, all right. Um, so, okay. So let's see. What do we have here? All right. Actually, we're not too far from done here. Hopefully. So. All right. So you opened a PR. Forget single. So let's talk about the the scappy models first. So what did you want to talk about with those? Come on, you. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, in Spacey there are uh, operations and there are models too. So uh, they allow us to use the deep learning stuff. Uh, just very few lines of code, like four mm -hmm. or five lines. So should I add that? I was just uh, thinking of. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I think, yeah, if you if you can add a if you can, so you're saying you can add operations that will allow us to use their deep learning. Um, yeah. Their, yeah, yeah. So basically, there will be operations, but uh, deep down, they will be running basically models, training models, and. Ah, uh, okay. Um, is there a, is there any reason why they shouldn't be a model? Just because you know a model. Yeah, yeah, we can use them as a model, but that's what I was uh, asking. Like, because there oh, are very should you few do lines it? of code. Should yeah, you so do an operation or should you do a model? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I would say, I would say, do, do a, uh, do a model, right? Because then we can use yeah. them with the model predict um, plugin, right? Are these only for prediction, or are they also for training? Yeah, they are also for training. Okay. Yeah. Then we should probably do a whole model then. Um, okay. So uh, would be good to integrate their deep learning models. Um, so let's see, and then let's make an issue for that. Um, all right, and I'll fix my mm, screwed up Whirlpool Rabbit thing. Um, Um, okay. Model. Um, okay. Um, so yeah, um, and that's obviously, uh, like, I guess I don't I don't know exactly how you're envisioning that playing into your current your current um, uh, uh, timeline, but uh, like how yeah how are you envisioning that playing into your current timeline? Is this like a yeah, stretch thing, or is this like you know as a part of your scappy operations? Uh, no, it's actually extra thing. So I I was okay. found, I, I found them very good, so I thought I should add them. Cool, great. Sweet. That sounds good. Just want to make sure we're all on the same page. All right. Okay. And then you've added the example uses, or you need to add the example uses to NLP operations. Okay. So we're done talking about scappy models then? Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Done, done. Um, okay. So, so Sakshan, you changed the flower classification example with the review that we did last week? Uh, right. Yes. Okay. And if uh, the new usage of get single will be merged, then I'll also merge master and do those changes. Okay. Okay, let's see. We'll use new version of get single after that is merged. Okay, so. So to review offline okay so 
I'll review that offline because I want to try to keep us at an hour here and I'll try to do that right away. Um, let's see. Um, okay. Um, and then... Okay. All right. Then HTTP channel config immediate response. So what do we got going on there, Agen? Yeah. Uh, so uh, then just take that picture. I can't. Uh, I just wanted to be clear on like what input format we are accepting. What input format? Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, we are accepting like different content types, right? So are we going to like accept what all the headers are from the config file or do we fix a format and like only take specific inputs? I'm not sure how this relates to immediate response. Uh, so the, the response, uh, like uh, we, in the, con in the issue which that you open, you can configure the response, like what response will yeah. Oh, so the content type for the response as well? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, like, uh, do we fix all the headers or do we just say, like, you can input the content type, uh, yeah. the status code, and, like, maybe a few headers, or, like, do we, like, pass the whole thing as a dictionary? Like, yeah. So, let's that? see. Um, yeah. Probably. Let's see. It, it would probably be best to. Um, let's see. It would probably be best to provide, um, let's see, so, yeah, to provide response headers as a whole dictionary is probably the best option here, right? Um, and then I would say, you know, also a separate key for status uh, would be good. Sorry? Uh, a separate key for status. Um, okay. Right. Um, because status isn't really a, a header so much, um, like the status code, right? So yeah, so headers, and then status, and then write the, basically the return immediately flag. Um, and was there also a body, uh, so I, I believe? Yeah, uh, so the issue, like, you have added a body. Yeah, right. So I think I think the idea was that if there was it's a issue return six five seven. Six five seven. Six five seven. I I believe, yeah, if we, we were gonna do if this key is present. Okay, so yeah, immediate response, status two hundred. Actually and so now what I'm thinking here is looking at this. Yeah, so we uh, probably so want we like, sorry, buddy. We probably want status and um, status and content type to be top level headers here, right? Okay. Um, and then immediate response should probably be something to the effect of like what the body is, right? Because, right, if you think about the data flow, the, the data flow config here. Uh, so output mode already decides what the content Yeah, so output, is. yeah, yes, yeah. But we should probably provide the ability to, um, you know, to override it if it exists, right? So basically, if we're not, if we don't run, like, if we're going to do immediate response, if the content type is specified, so let's let's write this out. Um, so let's see, if we see, so let's do immediate response. Right, okay, so uh, so essentially what I think what we've learned here is we need a way to specify what the body is, right? If, if there's an immediate response, what is the body, right? And in the case that, you know, it's an object, you JSON serialize the object, right? Um, 
you need a way to provide the status, the status code, and this is sort of just in general and for the immediate response, right? Um, but I guess, you know, this is, sorry, this is, I'm also realizing that this is creeping into other things, but let's just continue to talk about it for the fact that we need this still. So we need a way to provide the status code, right, regardless of whether it's an immediate yeah, response like, or not. Like, I, I, I don't understand, like, why, like, if we run into another, the status code will be different. Say what? If we run into another, the status code will be different. Well... I mean, so what? What? But what we're saying here is that. Wait, what? I, I'm. I'm sorry. I, I'm having trouble hearing you still. Uh, this is what I'm, I'm sorry about this. It's okay. Um. Uh. Yeah. Just yeah. Could you just say it again? Yeah. Uh. Like the status code would depend on what the server is doing. Yeah. So I don't understand why we are taking that as an input. Well, because sometimes you want to provide a specific status code, right? So. If you, well, actually, that's a good point. Yeah, we, it might be something that needs to be dynamic. But, like, if you have an immediate response for something, like, say, say, yeah, no, maybe not, maybe not, yeah. We probably need a yeah, way. Yeah, I got why the status code is in the immediate response, but, like, if it's yeah. something else, yeah, then we handle the status code. Yeah, yeah, so what we really need is a way for the data flow to decide what the status code would be, is kind of what you're saying here? Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. that's a good point. Yeah, so let's scrap all of this. Um, okay, um, yeah, okay, that's a great point, so we need a new issue for that. Um, but, okay, so then I guess if we're looking at this, in that case, what what is... Um, what is like, like so? What what is what is the question on how to move forward if we just are looking at this? Yeah. Uh, so like, so what I was thinking is we have immediate response, and like we have kind of type, then we have immediate response, and in the sub level of immediate response, we have the headers. Oh yeah, in the headers. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then we would just have headers, and then content type. Application JSON, and then this would be more like content type. This is what you're saying, right? Yes. Okay, great. Yeah, so sorry. If they want to have any additional headers, they can. Then they can just put it. Perfect. All right. Yeah. So sorry, I botched. I botched that. Um, let's see. So then we. Uh, this HTTP. Uh, just one more thing. So uh, this will be. I was thinking of like calling the current or decom data flow as a like I'll add that as a that as a task. If it's immediate response, like that would work. Right? Yeah. We'll we'll run the data flow with create task, right? Okay. Yeah. So that's what we want to do. Yeah. Is run the data flow using create task. Um, Um, and this is something. Okay. Sweet. All right. Um, yeah, uh, yes. Can you check the meter chat? Uh, like, this is what I was thinking of. Uh, Yeah, that looks right. That def that looks right. Yeah. Um, although, of course, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. it's not complete. Like yeah. I was confused after, like I was typing the response. Okay. Thing. Perfect. Yeah, this looks this looks very this looks like good good on the path code. Um, sweet. And like I'll need to score this. One. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think so, I added the uh, for the right. test, uh, like uh, uh, for the test, uh, we uh, like I wasn't sure like what to do. So if we have our data task and we are we already got a response, so like, I was thinking maybe we change some environment variables and see if that will change. Uh yeah, or you could you know 
create a temporary directory or something and I don't know actually let's see we will yeah the environment variables oh, yeah, will have the always. same scope yeah or use you know like a uh, yeah I mean you could have an operation which you know the like you know and you could use an, you could have an operation which has a, a like a um, yeah I mean there's a lot of ways you could do it I'm sure you'll you'll you, you 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 could try the environment variable you could try like defining an operation within the local scope of the function that accesses a variable that's so you could define a function within the test function and then you could define like a dictionary or something like an ob some kind of object um, and then set a property of that object um, when you run oh. the data flow right and then when you would basically or like even better you would do like an async io event or something um, right, and you you define the event. Here, let me just sort of show what I'm talking about here. Um, I think you know what I'm talking about, but just for everyone's benefit, yeah, in case. Um, okay. Uh, John, so I'll drop now. I have okay. some stuff to. Uh, no worries. Okay, Sounds good. I think we're almost done. But have a good one. Okay, so Bye. let's see. Change settings. All right, okay. So just as an example, and okay, so all right, so all right, so you would do like the client session dot git and then the URL to the server I can't remember exactly what it is um, and then uh, oh wait um, uh, Um, let's see. Uh, you start, yeah, so basically, what would you do? Yeah, you would start the server and provide it. Let's see, where's the data flow test? Um, service. Service. HTTP. Tests. Where's the data flow? Um, okay, register. Okay, yeah. So this one. Tests. The data flow. Okay, and this one tests. Okay. Yeah, I was seeing it as where you set up the whole directory and then start that up with Yeah, so, I mean, and these are basically, so these ones run this hello world data flow. Um, and so you might do something like, um, you know, test immediate response. And then you would have your immediate response config. Whatever that config is. Um, let's see. Uh, data flow. We don't want to export really. So yeah, so actually what we want to do is where is the test routes running uh, you want to basically like grab into the um, you want to grab into the server itself so t server cli t server that start 
and what does T server end up being? T server is server runner dot patch. So start coro. So I think your CLI, yeah, it's this guy. So self dot CLI dot register. Okay, register config, register. Okay, and then here's the channel config. Um, so, yeah, you want to call, I think you want to do something like, uh, instead of calling the register method like this, I think you want to do something like self.cli.register and then pass it the channel config and then have the channel config be the non-exported data flow. Um, um, right, so something like this. Um, and that way you can define an operation um, you can define an operation within here so event equals isinkio dot event basically so that you maintain the local scope and so that your data flow um, will since you're not serializing it, it will keep the implementation, right? So my um, and decorate this thing with op. I just learned about this non-local thing. Um, dot set. Actually, I'm not sure if that's really what you want to do, but if you do event dot set, I think this is what you want here. Um, so, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is what you want. Um, and then basically you would do, you know, you would post, and then you would assert that the response is equal to uh, what is the example here? Say here, like error equals none. And then you would say, you know, await event. Um, I believe this is what you want. Um, yeah, I put that. Yeah, so, and I'll just dump this out here. All right, all right. Are we good? I'll just post this in the Gitter chat, so or I'll post it in the comment too. So, did that sound good for that? Yes. Type two headers. All right, um, and then let's see. Uh, talked about how to test. All right, um, great. Well, thanks everyone. Uh, does anybody have anything else? All right. Uh, John. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it actually didn't fix the issue. So. Oh no. Actually, now it's showing the issue for the second line. Okay. All right. Um, so in the high level. Let's see. So in the high level, there are two places where we are using async with. Okay. So. So let's see. Um. Can you post the stack trace? Uh, maybe I can share my screen. Yeah, yeah, let's see your screen. Yes.
Oh yes, so here is the stack trace. Okay, let's see. Attribute error A exit. So So previously it was showing me error here for this line. And now it is showing me error for this line. Okay. Um well wait a minute. Are you sure? It says four forty. Oh, uh, uh, let's run this one more time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the one for what you want. Okay, okay, great. Yay, all right, okay. Well, let's look at, um, let's look at the accuracy plugin then. Um, the accuracy okay. score, so let's see. Okay, so... Object context. Okay. Um, and let me look at the, the code as well. I'll put, pull up. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Um, so it derives from context. Hmm. And what about your your MSE plugin? Oh, uh, that's so. This is my MSE plugin. Accuracy context. So, this is very recent. Yeah, accuracy score. Okay, so that's good now. And then let's check in. Let's see. Let me check in base real quick for them. Check out. One second, sorry. Predict. Okay. I gotta pull down your chain. Let me just poke around. Context. Okay, so the base data flow facilitator object context should have a enter and a math, a exit. Um. By extension, the base object should too. So, um, I guess that begs the question: What? Let's see the test case. Or, well, the test the test case is just running the file, right? So, it's, it's just running this file. So, and then accuracy model MSE accuracy data set CSV. Means greater accuracy. It just runs the file. Hmm. <laughs> um. Let's see. Can you open the file? And then, or let's see. Open high level actually. So let's look at high level again real quick. Scroll up a little second here. Uh, so let's see the arguments. Okay, yeah, model, accuracy score, args. Okay. Um, what the hell? Okay, I guess I would say print print whatever the hell it is first. Why don't you do, yeah, why don't we print out what what is this thing? Um like right before we do the second A enter, just to make sure that we've got the right object here, right? Um, oh, yeah. Or, oh, I think I know what it might be. Um, accuracy score, when you call that, um, let's see. When we call it, yeah, I think the call method is abstract on data flow facilitator object so we need to have um the um within dffml slash accuracy slash accuracy dot py we need to implement a call method um yeah we need to implement a call method here so scroll down some more okay yeah so the call method here 
hasn't been implemented so and it looks like and this is probably something where we should just change in base quite honestly um so basically uh um the the accuracy scorer when you call the class right so first we did a inner right and and subclassing from the base data flow facilitator object fix the a inner right because that implements a inner and a exit yes. but it also for some reason subclassing from it did not trigger a um like exception because it it defines the call method as an abstract method within base data flow facilitator object but for some reason it's not throwing any issues here um i'm not sure exactly why that is uh but that's what's going on so um the oh maybe it's because let's see it's because it doesn't derive from abc so the base data flow facilitator object um in base.py so df of ml slash base.py yeah so it should be on line 536 Yeah, so here. So the issue here is that this guy doesn't derive from abc.abc uh, because it has... So this is a, just a sort of a separate issue, but if you put it in, then it will probably throw an error as soon as you run it. So we should put that in there. So as the very first thing class that it derives from, could you make that abc.abc like you had done? Um, let's see. Yeah, okay, so now let's try running that file again, and it should throw an exception at a different spot. All right, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, never mind. That's maybe why that's not working. Base configurable entry point. Okay. Uh, all right, okay, that's not worth figuring out right now. All right, so let's just change um, the accuracy. So just copy this call method here. Um, so let's get rid of that abc.abc .abc and let me put a note about it in the meeting. Um, so. So, uh, actually model has also has a call method. So like, do we have to implement something? So that yeah, that's exact. So basically just copy that. You can copy that. Um, cause that's what we want. Only without, you know, we'll remove the make config directory. So put that in accuracy score rather than accuracy. So the one above, below that, I mean, because uh, you're in the context right now. Yeah, perfect here. So, and this is basically, this is what you're seeing here is, is you're seeing that the double context entry thing, right? So the first thing we do is we A enter on this accuracy score, then we do the call, right? And then when we do the call, it creates the context and we do the A enter on the context. Um, so if you save this now, it should, should be working. Um, accuracy, oh, maybe accuracy score or context. Let's see. So it's not showing the area. Um, let's see, accuracy takes two positional arguments, but three were given. Okay, so we need to modify, oh, I think we need to modify, this is because of the, the SLR model that hasn't been modified yet. So this is, I mean, this is basically, I think we're now we're getting into phase three is what, what the issue is. Um, so let's see. Um. So yeah, so this is you. We're we're creeping into phase three. Um, 
which basically is that you need to model actually we will just add this to phase phase two since that's uh this is like the phase three right now so uh, modify um dffml slash model slash slr dot py um, to have the accuracy or to remove the accuracy method um, so I guess that that is your next step right now so go and remove the accuracy method from here let's see yeah All right, let's see, what does it want? SLR model object has no attribute accuracy. What? Okay. Because maybe it is not deriving from that. Yeah, is it not deriving from that class? Because let's see. it is some simple model. Simple model, okay, so let's check where simple model derives from then. Because simple model should derive from model. But it's possible that it's deriving from model context. Uh, that's model. So where's simple model? So this is simple model. It derives from model. Oh, okay. And the issue is probably that that method is in model context. So maybe if you derive, yeah. So maybe if you also derive from model context. I don't know how this is going to end up working. But try try making simple model also derive from model context. We'll see if this blows up. Yeah, meta class conflict. Okay. So yeah, no, yeah, go with your initial approach there where you made model derived from model context. Or is that actually gonna be a good idea? Let's see. Wait a minute, that may not be a good idea. So let's see. One second. Hmm. Yeah, okay, so no, yeah, we don't want that. Um, let's see. Uh, maybe we can just take that method. Let's see. I think you should be able to say, within simple model, you should be able to do accuracy, like just where it says, um, yeah, go down to simple model. And like right under, let's see. Yeah, maybe just like right, right, right at the end there or something. Um, uh, yeah, maybe just add a line that says accuracy equals, you know, model context dot accuracy. And let's see how this works. And then accuracy is going to be lowercase. Get some? Yeah, make that lowercase. Oh no, I'm dangerously low on battery here. Okay, let's see what it is. Float argument must be a string or number, not a coroutine. Okay, um, this is good. This we're calling the right function now. Okay. Oh, you did. We just need to wait. Accuracy score dot score. Oops. 